Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today I've got a project going where I have a bunch of these, we'll call them washers, that I'm turning up. They're about a half inch thick. I started with an uh, inch and seven eighths diameter material. I drilled and bored these holes. And what I need to do now is create a counter bore on each side and also turn down the perimeter. Now if I was only doing a few of these, what I would probably do is turn down a piece of stock that would match this this bore and also have a shoulder to register on and super glue it and do it that way. However, I've got a bunch of these and quite frankly using super glue arbors is a pain in the butt. Another option would be to use a tapered mandrel and turn it between centers. You know, that'll be great for the perimeter, but I wouldn't be able to create the counter board. So what I've come up with is to create an expanding arbor. One that'll match the bore and also have a register so that I could push it up against that register and tighten down, I think I'm going to use a, uh, a quarter twenty screw to pull a wedge to expand the arbor and it'll wedge itself into the bore and then I'll be able to do all the operations that I need to and be able to take it on and off quickly. So let's head over to the lathe and get to work. Right, for this project I'm just using a piece of hot rolled steel. The first thing we're going to do is turn a half inch shank once that's finished we'll put it in a collet and do the rest of our turning from there. I've already started faced off the end and I've got this down to roughly three quarter of an inch in diameter so I've got another quarter inch on the diameter to go. That'll do. <clears throat> Alright, I got the part turned around, put in a collet. Now we're going to turn down the perimeter to 1 inch 20 thousandths.
Alright, the next thing we're going to do is turn this to length, uh, which is 95 thousandths. I've already made a cleaning pass, set my dial to zero. We've got 75 thousandths to go. It's hard to get in there. The uh, part of the caliper here was hitting the hitting my nut here. But we got ninety five nine hundred fifty thousands. All right, next we're going to turn that step that the part will register onto. I've already made a starting pass and made a measurement. Have my dial set to zero, and we've got. 55 thousandths to take off. good fit. I don't think I mentioned but we were looking for 862 thousandths on the perimeter. We got half thousandths over and we turned it down to a total depth of 200 thousandths. Alright next we need to drill and bore the head out of the tool. Now the shank of the tool is going to be tapped quarter twenty for a screw that will pull a wedge that will spread the jaws out. So the first, what we need to do is drill all the way through the tool for the tap drill size for quarter 20, which is a number seven. Then after that, we'll come in here with some larger drill bits and then bore this out 
to make this as thin as possible so that the jaws will have some spring action to them and actually spread when uh, we tighten the screw down. Alright, the screw that I'm using isn't threaded all the way up to the head. Uh, there's a shoulder on it. And if I use it in the way it is now, the threads will bottom out before it tightens down on the wedge. So what I need to do is create clearance into the shank about a half inch so that the threads won't bottom out. Now this dimension isn't uh, overly critical. I just need to go about a half inch into the shank plus the length of the head here and I just mark that on the drill bit which is about an inch and a half. <clears throat> Alright next I'm just going to clear out some of this metal so I can get my boring bar in there. Now the total depth isn't overly critical, just as long as you don't go into the shank. The finished depth, once I finish boring, will be 850 thousandths. So I've got my drill bit marked uh, slightly under that, so that I can finish it with a boring bar. And the diameter, or it will be bored out to a diameter of 625 thousandths. Alright, I've already made a cleaning pass, set my dials to zero, we've got 32 thousandths to go. just a hair over but that's okay this part is actually pretty warm so it'll probably shrink back down to that 625 All right, the final operation we need to do is to cut the taper inside the bore here and the dimension isn't overly critical um, I'm just gonna get relatively close to this outside edge here that gives the wedge 
plenty of meat to bite onto when you're tightening the screw. That'll work. All right, the next thing we're going to work on is the wedge. Unfortunately, the only thing I have left big enough in stock is a piece of the 303 stainless, which is unfortunate because it is pretty difficult to machine. But I think we'll manage. Uh, I've already faced off the end. Next, we're going to turn down the perimeter to 790 thousandths. Uh, that's just about the the size to where it'll recess into here uh, by about five thousandths. Seven hundred ninety. All right. Next, we're going to drill a hole clearance for the quarter twenty screw. That should do it. Wish me luck. <clears throat> Alright, I got the wedge mounted on an arbor that I just drilled and tapped for the quarter twenty screw. And now we're going to cut the taper on the back side. Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I want the taper on the wedge to be the same as the taper inside the head of the tool. So, in order for me to do that, I need to cut the tapers with the same angle. If I would have cut this taper first, then I would have had to swing the compound in the opposite direction to be able to cut that that taper so in order for me to keep it the same I'm doing it this way so that I can ensure that they're a perfect match
and that should do it. All right, here she is all finished. Now I lost the footage of cutting these slots. All I did was use my bandsaw. Um, the proper way to have done it would have been to use a slitting saw, but I don't have one. Once I get the uh, Barker mill back up and running, I'm going to get a slitting saw in Arbor, and I'm going to remake this part just so that I can make these slots a little better. I don't know, because you can see here that the bandsaw blade started walking on me. But even with that, it, it'll still serve its purpose. So we just screw that in there like that. Take our part, push it up against the register. and then tighten it down. You can see it holds it securely. Being that it has a register I can put them all in at the same time I can set my dials on my lathe so I can cut the parts all the same and then it comes off easy. So let's head over to the lathe and we'll test it out. Alright we're set back over here at the lathe. Got my half inch collet this will slip right in and tighten it down now I can take my part push it up against that register and tighten it down now she's held in tight let's make a test cut on the perimeter, see how it works. She works a treat. That'll do it for this episode. Thank you for watching Basement Machinist. I'll see you next time.